Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is December 19th. That's right. The countdown to Christmas is on, although it doesn't feel like it in the afternoons, but it's been a pretty, pretty week so far. Now, Mike, I don't see you on monitor here, but you're right over, you're over there, there, so we're okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and as far as the afternoon weather, yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. We had some of those high clouds move on in here late in the day, and that's going to be the situation today. We've got some of those clouds as well, sort of uh, leftovers, 49 degrees right now, and the dew point, we still have very dry air out there, not any wind, but those clouds are acting like a little bit of a blanket, so we'll only drop down a few more degrees, not quite as cool as yesterday and not down to normal, and then we make it up to 67 later on today. Today. So again, not as warm as yesterday, but still on the above normal side. The aquifer dropped down two tenths of a foot and the allergens. I don't know about you. I'm kind of feeling that one. Mountain Cedar really went up yesterday. 3150 on the high side. Mold is low. Here's a look at the satellite picture right now. And again, some of these high clouds that are hanging around here. Not a real thick layer, but just enough, like I said, to act like a, a bit of a, a blanket out there. Temperatures still chilly out in the hill country may actually be below freezing or at freezing in your backyard out there in and around Comfort 38 in Kerrville, 39 Valverde, and then 45 right now over there at Randolph. So partly cloudy, upper 60s later on today and then tomorrow. When the humidity comes back in here overnight, we're going to have some drizzle starting off in the morning and then plenty of clouds and we'll be up to 70. Get used to seeing temperatures right around 70. That's going to be the case throughout the rest of the week, but it's those low temperatures that are really going to be holding up there right around 60 for the rest of the week. Warm and humid and better rain chances Thursday and then especially Friday. A little bit of a lull in the action and then better rain chances come in here on Sunday and can't really rule out a stray shower or two even going into Christmas Day. All the details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Yeah, Mike, it's been a little bit busier than normal Tuesday morning out there on our roads, especially for some of our overnight traffic. And uh, yeah, you were talking about that mountain cedar. Definitely fill in a little bit of that this morning. But taking a look outside Trans Guide traffic cameras, 281 at the quarry. We have traffic moving pretty good there. 281 loop 410 traffic moving pretty smooth there as well. We do have a couple of things want to let you know about a stalled vehicle uh, still being reported by TxDOT right now on the eastbound lanes of Loop 410 and Marbach Road. Uh, doesn't appear to be causing any major delays right now and uh, hopefully we can get that cleared out here in just a bit. One other thing here, 151 and West Military. Okay, so this has now been cleared out by our traffic maps. It was being reported earlier as a car fire in that area, but it looks like we are now clear out there by the SeaWorld area. One other thing to let you know about, we do have ongoing construction here, southbound I-35 at Judson Road, and uh, you can see that we still have traffic moving through here, but we do have a camera out there, so you can see it's still, uh, you know, we still have some at least one exit ramp there blocked. These are the southbound lanes of uh, Judson Road at Topper Wine, so still causing a little bit of uh, traffic back up in that area, but hopefully these crews can get this cleared out over the next uh, 30 minutes or so. We'll continue to monitor this and give you the, the latest updates as they become available to us. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say an early morning walk to a Denny's restaurant ended where the girl shot overnight. Happened just after 3 a.m. in the 7100 block of Northwest Loop 410 near Culebra. Police say two girls were walking to the restaurant when four other girls with masks drove into the parking lot and demanded their property. When a victim refused, police say she was shot. She was taken to the hospital. SAPD is not reporting any arrests so far. However, officers say they have an idea of who the shooting suspect is because of an Instagram post. And Texas is cracking down on illegal immigration with two new laws. Both Senate Bills 3 and 4 focus on border security. SB 3 will send $1.5 billion to continue building barriers along our border with Mexico. And Senate Bill 4 gives local law enforcement along the southern border the power to arrest anybody they catch entering the U.S. illegally. Governor Greg Abbott just signed both bills into law yesterday in Brownsville. The authors of the United States Constitution foresaw a situation when the federal government would be inattentive to states that faced challenges at their borders. And in response, they inserted Article 1, Section 10 to the United States Constitution to empower states to take action to defend themselves. 
Opponents think this goes too far, and in response, they are telling Governor Abbott, see you in court. Now to the Mideast and more fallout from the Israel-Hamas war. The U.S. has announced a new multinational task force that will begin keeping watch over the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. The joint effort comes as a major oil company announces it's temporarily pausing operations through those waters. Meantime, as ABC's Justin Finch reports, Hamas has released new video of three elderly hostages. This morning, the U.S. and the world responding to increasing threats from Iran-backed Houthi militants. We're leading a multinational maritime task force to uphold the bedrock principle of freedom of navigation. Iran's support for Houthi attacks on commercial vessels must stop. The Pentagon says those Houthi rebels attacked two more ships in the Red Sea yesterday after months of launching missile and drone strikes at commercial ships and U.S. forces in the region. The attacks prompting British oil company BP to temporarily pause all transits through the Red Sea, including shipments of oil and natural gas, calling it a precautionary pause. 10% of the world's trade passes through the Red Sea. The waters between Asia and Africa, with the Suez Canal at the tip, leading to the Mediterranean Sea. Some ships are now detouring around Africa, adding costs and delays. Nine of the 10 largest ocean carriers in the world, so representing about 85% of container capacity, have rerouted. Experts predict U.S. gas prices could stop falling in the next couple of days, due only in part because of ongoing Red Sea tensions. In Europe, high-level talks aimed at reaching a new ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. CIA Director William Burns meeting with the Qatari Prime Minister and the head of Israel's Mossad spy agency. The meeting comes as Hamas posted video of three elderly Israeli hostages pleading to be freed. Their families requesting we not air the video, but demanding their immediate release. It's taking too long and every minute that passing, it, it's, a, it's a huge gambling on my grandpa's life and others' lives. Pressure is mounting on Israel to free all remaining hostages after Israeli troops mistakenly killed three hostages. Israel estimates Hamas is holding more than 120 hostages, including Americans, in Gaza. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In China, at least 126 people have been killed in a magnitude 6.2 earthquake in the country's northwest. The quake occurred just before midnight on Monday. More than 500 people were injured. The U.S. Geological Survey put the quake's magnitude at 5.9. The death toll was the highest since an April 2013 earthquake that killed 196 people. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is investigating high levels of lead found in sun cinnamon applesauce pouches. The FDA says tests of cinnamon samples found lead levels more than 2,000 times higher than proposed standards. They were sold under the Wanabana, Wise and Schnucks brands. The FDA says there have been at least 65 reports of illnesses in children under 6 years old linked to those pouches. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention using different data has found more than 120 confirmed or suspected cases in 22 states. The FDA recommends anyone who may have consumed the recalled products to get their blood tested for lead. Lots of people traveling by road this week. Here's a look at gas prices ahead of the holiday weekend. Good news, they keep going down, at least for now. According to AAA, the statewide average for a gallon of regular unleaded is 253 here in Bear County. It's more than 10 cents cheaper at 242 and national prices average about 306 a gallon. Well, if you are traveling by air today, let's take a look at the flight aware misery map and some of our problems have been on the west coast overnight due to showers uh, in the valleys and mountains right now it looks like Boston and LAX lead the map right now for delays across the nation. We'll keep an eye on it for you. Well, workers at Toyota Stadium up in Frisco getting ready for the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl tonight. Game features the UTSA Roadrunners and the Marshall Thundering Herd. Hopefully it ends with a bowl win for our team. KSAT 12 Sports' Mary Rominger is in Frisco and had some important coffee questions for head coach Jeff Trailer. 
Jeff, there's a uh, rumor floating around here that the winning coach is going to get doused with some coffee after the game. Do you, do you have a, a preference of coffee? We're at Toyota Stadium with the UTSA football team as the Roadrunners try to bring home their first ever bowl win. And if they were to accomplish the feat, instead of a traditional Gatorade shower, what does legendary head coach Jeff Trailer think about possibly getting doused with a big cup of joe? I've never won a bowl game, so uh, I haven't even got that far ahead. But if we were so fortunate to be able to do that, you know, I'm one of those kind of guys that, you know, I have a little coffee with my cream, so not not a black coffee guy for sure. It, it's going to be sweet. And so if it goes on my bald head, preferably something sweet so I can maybe enjoy the taste. <laughs> UTSA and Marshall will play tonight at 8 at Toyota Stadium in Frisco outside Dallas. Good news, UTSA is favored by 11 and a half points. We'll have pregame coverage later today on KSAT 12 starting at 5 p.m. Victor Wimbenyama will not play in Milwaukee tonight because of right ankle soreness. Spurs will square off against the Bucks starting at 7 p.m. It's the start of a three-game road trip for our team. Milwaukee is favored by 16 and a half. Good luck and go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. Time now, 511 and 49 degrees for now. Still ahead, why Apple is pausing sales of some of its Apple watches. Plus, as many get ready to enjoy some tasty food and treats this weekend, some are deciding to put their weight loss prescription medications on hold. Up next, why physicians say that may not be a good idea. Outside with live cam, temperatures in the 40s and 50s out there across our region. Looking back towards downtown on this Tuesday before Christmas. Good morning, welcome back. It is 514. Well, some people taking weight loss drugs are skipping doses this holiday season, but many physicians say even a short break can have some side effects. ABC's Ariel Rishef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, taking a break from weight loss medication for the holidays. Unpopular opinion in the semaglutide world. Julie Stoll Kelly, who has lost 38 pounds, says she's foregoing the appetite suppressing semaglutide in favor of feeling less uncomfortably full and fielding fewer questions during festive meals. What I noticed was I was still able to eat the things <laughs> that I really wanted to um, indulge a little bit. I just had to be really conscious about how I was feeling, um, what I was eating, how fast I was eating it. Doctors caution there can be side effects. If a patient skips their medication for one to two weeks, they might not see those improvements in their hunger and appetite. And so they'll inevitably eat more and that may contribute to some weight gain. And we'll have much more on navigating the holidays on weight loss medication coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Arielle Reshef, ABC News, New York. Quarter past the hour, 48 degrees. Up next, how TikTok is making its app experience on tablets and foldables a little better. And checking Trans Guide, we've got uh, significant traffic out there in some spots. We had some leftover construction uh, in our first check of traffic with RJ. We'll talk to him a little bit later in the newscast. It takes special dedication to care for our elderly, especially when they need it most. At Visiting Angels, we help seniors remain independent and safe in their own home. And give families that special peace of mind, knowing that their loved ones have the best care possible. America's seniors need our helping hand. So if you care about caring, come on and join our team. Visiting Angels, America's choice in home care. We made a promise to our boy Blue that we would make the healthiest foods possible with the finest natural ingredients and real meat first. And that's our promise to you and your dog or cat. Because when you love them like family, you want to feed them like family. Checking with traffic and Mr. Marquez. Yeah, guys, it's been a little bit of a busier than usual uh, Tuesday morning. You know, I was thinking about uh, maybe coffee and maybe a little bit breakfast started early this morning. And okay. uh, Jeff Trailer, uh, you know, saying that he likes cream. I'm a big fan of that too as well. I'm not a big black coffee drinker. So. 
<laughs> but whatever gets you going on a Tuesday morning. And I uh, want to let you guys know about some construction. You mentioned it, Mark, before we went to break. Uh, so this was kind of leftover construction. But we have cleared out now there at 35 at Topper Wine at Judson Road. So they were obviously paying attention to us. Just plain. No, they're doing their work out there. And uh, they have cleared things out there. So that's good news there for our drivers on the northeast side. A uh, little bit of an issue here on the uh, southeast side as we look uh, a little bit far, the further south. There, Loop 410 eastbound at Espada Road. So this is right there by South End Road, and you can see this is right there as 410 hits 37. We have a stalled vehicle there being reported. Again, it's been a little bit uh, busier than usual kind of morning for us. Uh, so we talked about this a little bit yesterday. We have some uh, ongoing construction there on the far north side, northwest side, and uh, we have the turnaround closures that are going to be taking place at Loop 1604, both directions here, La Quintero Parkway and John Peace Boulevard. So if you're headed out, doing some Christmas shopping today. Just keep this in mind. They're going to have their sort of alternating closures in that area. But for the most part, traffic looking pretty good across the San Antonio area. Mike, how are things looking outside right now? Well, a little on the cloudy side. By the way, you would not like my coffee. So, oh, yes. <laughs> Why is that? Strong and just black. No cream, no sugar, Straight to no the nothing. Point. So if you can see through it, it's called tea. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. doesn't work, right? <laughs> anyway, hey, let's uh, take a, a sneak peek ahead to Christmas Eve as well as Christmas Day. Obviously, still four or five days away, so little subtle changes can happen. But what we know is that, yes, it is definitely going to be warmer than average. We're going to be in the low 70s, low to mid 70s over the weekend and right around 70 on Christmas Day. There are some rain chances and those will really start to move into the picture. Thursday and then it kind of varies from day to day. But as far as the actual timing of the rain, how much that's still a little bit iffy. As of right now, it looks like we would see a better shot at some rain on Sunday on Christmas Eve and then moving out by Christmas Day. But again, that's still a couple of days off. Yesterday, what a spectacular sunset. We had some of those high clouds move on in here and some of those high clouds are hanging around here right now. Not really showing up too awfully well in uh, in this picture. And throughout the rest of today, we keep some of those high clouds around. Temperatures will drop maybe a few degrees from where they are right now. We're in the upper 40s, um, shave off a couple of notches here and there. Still just above normal. Normal low is low 40s this time of year. And then we'll be up to... 62 already at noon, almost up to the normal high temperature. Then we top off at 67, so still a little bit on the above normal side. Humidity is still very, very low this morning, but that's going to be it because as the day rolls on, still going to be comfortable today, but that southeasterly flow really pulls in the humidity overnight and by tomorrow morning. So a little bit of mist drizzle, maybe even a patch of fog is going to be possible tomorrow, and that humidity is just going to continue to build as we go into the next couple of days. Here Here's the clouds that are showing up on the satellite picture right now. Again, they're kind of mid high level clouds uh, acting like sort of a blanket to hold in some of the heat, which is why we're not going to get as chilly as what we were yesterday. As uh, Mark was talking about over there around Los Angeles, a little bit of uh, precipitation and then off to the northeast. There's still some of that lake effect snow coming in off of uh, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. That's going to diminish before it reaches the eastern seaboard right there around New York, Boston. But there are still uh, some showers out there. So as far as travel, though, in the central portion of the country, if you are heading out today, really not bad. And that's going to be the situation for the next couple of days. So if you're heading out tomorrow, Thursday, a little different uh, situation. Today, 67, high temperature. And then notice tomorrow morning's low, nowhere near as cold as where we have been the past few days, staying in the mid and even upper 50s, so good 15 or so degrees above normal. Better chance of rain on Thursday. By the way, winter officially starts Thursday night. Not going to feel like it. And then mid 70s over the weekend. Uh, better shot at rain Friday. And then I think again on Sunday, still maybe a shower left over Monday, but uh, maybe clearing on out, but still going to be very, very warm. Yeah, Christmas Day does look very mild. Yeah. We call that new bike riding weather. Yeah. Ah, I like that. Yes. The kiddos will like it. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 524, 48 degrees. Look okay, at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3304. Fireball 5, Daily 4, 2, 3, 4, 7, Fireball 8. And the rest of your numbers, Cash 5, 1, 5, 13, 25, 35, Texas 2-Step 11, 14, 15, 17, with a bonus ball of 25. And your Powerball numbers, that drawing is coming up here on one day, when, yeah, tomorrow night, 5, 8, 19, 34, 39, Powerball is 26, Power Play 3, that jackpot, 
$572 million. Apple is pausing the sale of its latest versions of the Apple Watch due to an ongoing legal dispute. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple will soon stop selling some of its watches because of a patent dispute over blood oxygen monitors. The International Trade Commission had ruled that Apple infringed on the patent of a medical technology company. Sales of the Series 9 and Ultra 2 watches will be suspended starting Thursday. TikTok has upgraded its app for users of tablets and foldable devices. According to the company, the app is now better suited for larger screens so viewers can experience a clear feed. And the app's navigation bar is now at the top and bottom of the screen. YouTube TV is adding a shortcut to help users switch back and forth between channels. A long press of the OK or select buttons on your remote will work the same as the last channel button on a regular remote control. It helps deal with the fact YouTube TV doesn't use channel numbers. The developers must work from home. Sounds like they have plenty of remote experience. Those are your tech bites. Okay, that one's it okay. It works. Yeah, it not works. bad. Time check 528, 48 degrees. There's not many things more loathsome than people stealing your mail or your packages, especially ahead of Christmas. Up next, how the San Antonio Police Department was able to catch two people who are suspected of taking stuff from people all across town. A lot of stuff. Plus how the Federal Aviation Administration plans to address ongoing issues with fatigued air traffic controllers here in the U.S. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we are speaking with the Vice President of Enterprise Fraud Management at RBFCU on how to make those last-minute purchases without getting scammed in the process. And we're back. Good morning. It is Tuesday the 19th. Thanks for joining us. And if you're visiting to San Antonio, this is our kind of winter. Well, a little sunshine for the most part. Yeah, and then uh, our kind of winter is going to turn into basically spring, if you will, by later on this week with temperatures that are going to be well up into the uh, the low 70s and low temperatures won't be that chilly. Still grab a jacket this morning and beautiful view out there, as you can see with the uh, dry air that's in place. Nice and crisp looking out there. Great shot of the smokestacks over at the quarry all dressed up in red and green for Christmas and the uh, the tree over there at the Concord Plaza on the side of the building. We do have some high clouds, <clears throat> excuse me, hanging in here. Those started to move in late yesterday afternoon and kind of acting like a bit of a blanket. We will still drop down a couple of more degrees. We've got very dry air. We've got light or no wind to speak of, but that little thin layer of clouds uh, up there is going to keep us from getting as cold as where we could get. And we're not going to be anywhere near what we were yesterday, down to 41 degrees. So we're going to stay very much above normal this morning. 30s and 40s all around the area. Obviously colder in the hill country, 35 in comfort. So close to freezing maybe in your backyard out there. Mountain Cedar, it really went up yesterday. 3150 mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of today, 62 at noon and then 67 for a high temperature. So we will still be a few degrees above normal, not quite as warm as yesterday and then a little bit of a high cloud cover and then the clouds are going to be thickening up overnight and then the humidity moves back in overnight. What does that mean as far as temperatures? How about rain chances? And we take a look ahead to Christmas weekend and of course Christmas Day coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, you were talking about problems earlier, still the case? Yeah, Mike, so it's uh, been a little bit busier than normal here on your Tuesdays. We get started with our 5.30 half hour here. Take a look outside Trans Guy traffic camera. See a little bit of heavier traffic here, especially 90 there, General McMullen. Uh, usually don't see too many of these cars out during this time of the morning, but uh, just want to let you know about a couple of things that we have going on right now. So uh, I'm going to get a closer look here in just a little bit, but I just, just popped up on TxDOT over there in the uh, Cibolo area. If you're heading north, I-35 northbound at Solms Road, we have a disabled vehicle out there. So I'll get a little bit closer look and see in just a bit exactly what is happening out in that area. But we do have this stalled vehicle still being reported here. Eastbound Loop uh, 410. This is near Espada Road out there by South End. So southeast, kind of south side for our drivers that are heading towards I-35. 37 but doesn't appear to be causing any major delays right now at the moment. So one more quick look here at Trans Guide traffic cameras. You see Loop 410 per and vital traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. Same out here at Ray Ellison Boulevard. That's good news. And uh, 281 at the quarry, there was a pretty big crash overnight that was cleared out hours ago there in that area. So we will continue to monitor the roads and I'll give you an update here on what's going on out there up in Cibolo in just a little bit. Stephanie Mark, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. 
New this morning, a middle of the night meetup did not go as planned for a couple of teenagers. San Antonio police say the girls were robbed and one of them was shot. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened along Loop 410 near Culebra Road. And Katrina, you say thanks to social media, police believe they may know who's to blame. Well, that's right. Police told us that their investigation led them to an Instagram post, and it seems that may be where this whole thing started. Now, it all ended here with a shooting outside this Denny's restaurant early this morning. Police say that the two girls apparently were staying at a motel in this area and left around 3.30 this morning, telling their parents they were heading to Denny's for breakfast. In reality, police believe they had plans to meet up with another girl for a fight. However, when they got here, police say there were four people in masks who robbed them, then shot one of the girls in her backside. She was taken to a hospital. The masked robbers took off. But again, police say that they apparently have a good idea of who one of those robbers may be from that Instagram post. However, no arrests have been made yet. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, many of us consider this the season of giving. However, many of us are also sick and tired of people taking packages off our doorsteps. As John Paul Barajas reports, the San Antonio Police Department, they were able to arrest a man and a woman who were accused of stealing people's packages and mail. Envelopes, medication, packages. San Antonio Police are still sorting through everything they found, and the two people suspected of taking all that stuff allegedly took it from people all across town. Now, they're in custody. San Antonio police arrested Brian Salinas and Elizabeth Elizalde on charges of possessing identifying information and mail theft. Do you have anything to say? Nothing. The two suspects didn't want to talk, but people who live in the area where they were arrested today did. It's disgusting to me. It really is. You know, I, I just don't understand people doing things like that. It could be the only Christmas present from so, for somebody to get, and now they're deprived of it. It just doesn't make sense. SAPD says an off-duty officer saw the suspect stealing mail from their doorbell camera and reported it right away. An Amazon delivery driver who didn't want to show his face on camera says this kind of thing happens way too often this time of year. Try to hide it as best as we can, uh, but some people are just desperate right now during the holidays especially. Um, it sucks because, you know, I have a job to do, you know, I do my best, but I mean, people are going to be thieves. In the meantime, San Antonio police say they're working with the Postal Service and will contact people whose mail was recovered. But they also say it'll take time because they're still sorting through everything they found. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. As the White House and Congress try to figure out border security issues, another immigration-related battle is brewing right here in Texas. Governor Greg Abbott has officially created a new law that is aimed at punishing those who come into our state illegally. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the ACLU, ACLU is threatening to sue the governor over one of the bills, which the group is calling one of the most anti-immigrant bills ever passed by a state. By putting pen to paper, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signs a new state law making it a crime to illegally enter the state. The only thing we are doing by this law is making sure that our law enforcement have the tools they need to actually take action against those who are actually coming across the border illegally. The measure, SB4, gives local law officials the ability to arrest migrants who are trying to sneak into the Lone Star State. As the National Guard see, as the Texas Department of Public Safety see, they know that they're not profiling. They are seeing with their own eyes people who are violating the law. Supporters are praising Abbott's move, saying it provides Texas with another way to protect its southern border. But others have issues with this new law, which is expected to go into effect in March. The problem is that local law enforcement uh, don't have the training to enforce immigration law. So, of course, there could be some errors that could be done because they just don't get that, uh, that training. 21 Democratic lawmakers wrote a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland expressing, quote, grave concern about Texas Senate Bill 4. I do support stricter policies, but at the same time, not to the extreme where you don't allow the rights of the immigrants to um, uh, to claim asylum. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm John Lawrence.
Actor Jonathan Majors has been dropped from all upcoming Marvel Studios projects following a misdemeanor assault conviction in New York. Majors once a rising star in the Marvel Cinematic Universe portraying the comic supervillain Kang. Now convicted of domestic violence, a jury in New York found him guilty yesterday of assaulting his then-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. Critical in the case, this video showing Major shoving Jabari back into an SUV before he takes off. She chases him and he pushes her away and runs. The jury found Majors did not intentionally assault Jabari, acquitting him of two counts, but determined he acted recklessly, convicting him of two other misdemeanors. The Federal Aviation Administration plans to address ongoing issues with its air traffic controllers. The agency is expected to announce this week it will convene a special panel to review the impact of the overtaxed workforce is having on safety. Now, sources say the panel will specifically look at on-the-job fatigue facing air traffic controllers. The move comes after a string of near collisions involving commercial flights on or near the runways of major airports this year. The FAA has been repeatedly criticized for not addressing the issue of air traffic controller staffing. The union representing air traffic controllers says the agency only filled six new positions in the past year. Well, if you're counting on winning the lottery to pay off your holiday shopping bill, time is running out. Tomorrow night's jackpot would buy a lot of presents. As I said earlier, it's estimated at $572 million. Nobody's won the big pot since October 11th. This marks the fourth time it's risen above half a billion dollars this year. Your odds of winning it are one in 292 million per $2 ticket. Wow. wow. <laughs> time now, 541 and 48 degrees for now. An area rescue shelter has reached capacity. Up next, how you can help some foster some special pets ahead of the holidays at little or no cost to you. And looking out there with live cam, feels like Christmas now, 48 degrees, kind of Christmassy weather, but not so much in the afternoon. Still pretty though, we'll be looking out for that. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You don't usually get to do a test run with a pet, but now you can. A rescue shelter called God's Dogs in Von Army has reached capacity and it needs people to foster pets just for the next few weeks. So it is launching a campaign through January 3rd. And the best part is foster families don't have to pay for pet supplies. Great train, great with other dogs, great with everybody. She's just a happy-go-lucky little dog. She's perfect for a holiday, uh, holiday takeover. So foster families will get crates, food bowls, pee pee pads, toys, even clothing for the pets. So look for the story on KSET.com. 545, 48 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide. Earlier it was a little busy, but this shot doesn't look too bad at I-35. We're gonna get another check with RJ Marcus very soon. It is 548 on your Tuesday morning. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio, taking you outside Transguide traffic cameras, looking at I-35, New Braunfels traffic moving pretty good in both directions in there, that area, 37 out of Houston. See that we have smooth sailing right now on some of our roadways, uh, it's just a police vehicle there. Hopefully everyone's okay out there in that area. Okay, one quick look at the city map. There was an incident we were talking about a little bit while ago, a couple of minutes ago, and this is a little bit further up past Cibolo. I thought it was closer to Cibolo, but if you are headed out from Cibolo up to Schertz, just keep in mind we have a stalled vehicle being reported on the northbound lanes of I-35 at Psalms Road. So right there, Engel Road, kind of this uh, area right here. So if you're headed up in this area towards New, Bra towards New Braunfels, just keep this in mind. This is something that you may come across. Uh, taking one, take, wanted to give you a quick look here at some gas prices, and uh, you know we talked about this a little while ago. If you are traveling over the holidays, uh, just keep this in mind. This might be a good time to go head out right now. We have 258 right now average gas price here in San Antonio, a little bit less than the statewide average and obviously a little bit less there than the U.S. average and uh, it's kind of fluctuated a little bit from uh, last year. So always a very busy time to travel. I will be heading up I-35 and I was actually thinking about this earlier, but um, you know what? Bucky's is actually a pretty good stop yes, <laughs> if you need some last minute gifts. <laughs> You can't go wrong with the Buckies up there in New Braunfels. Oh, yeah. Throw a stick and you'll find something yeah. to give. Or you for know, snacks, yeah. even. A bag of beaver nuggets. There you go. That could be a gift a for somebody. Gift. It's the gift that keeps on giving, Mike. Why not? I mean, yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's Be a great prepared. Idea. Yeah. Okay. You have to go today? <laughs> no, not today. Oh, okay, yeah. good, yeah. good. Over Christmas, the uh, holiday. Yeah. Okay. Over the weekend. You got some time. Guess we know what we're getting. <laughs> All <laughs> right, uh, take a look at this beautiful picture here. And the moon in its waxing phase, almost at its uh, first quarter. It's going to be full on the 27th, so a week from tomorrow. Beautiful, beautiful picture. Love all the detail right in there, too. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Make sure you send some, some shots in there of all your Christmas decorations or maybe the moon. Beautiful views. Speaking of decorated for Christmas, the uh, smokestacks over there at the quarry. And uh, I always love that one, the tree on the side of the uh, building over there, the Concord Plaza. 49 degrees here in town, well above normal. Normal low is in the low 40s here, and we do have some 30s in parts of the hill country. We got a little bit of a cloud cover out there, which is acting like kind of a blanket because we do have really dry air in place and hardly any wind. So two of the three ingredients in place to really get those cold, cold temperatures. Now, this is going to be the last morning that we are going to be this chilly because humidity is going to really start to go up. Still comfortable throughout most of the day today, but look at how the winds come in here out of the uh, southeast. So with the extra humidity coming in here overnight, we're probably going to be seeing a little bit of drizzle, maybe even a patch or two of fog tomorrow morning. And that humidity is just going to continue to pump on in here over the course of the next few days. So it's going to stay pretty humid then the rest of the week going into the weekend. Uh, we may fluctuate another couple of degrees here or there, uh, staying in the mid to upper 40s this morning. And we'll have partly cloudy skies, a lot of those high clouds that have moved on in here, 62 at noon. And then we top off at 67, so we will end up a few degrees above normal again today. Not as warm as yesterday's 73. All right, here's what's going on around the country. If you're doing any traveling plans, uh, if you have travel plans, I should say, and today we'll keep some of these clouds around here, but it's just basically on the, uh, the bookends. As a matter of fact, things do clear out uh, out there to the uh, northeast in some of the bigger airline hubs, airport hubs out there. And then tomorrow, same situation. After a little bit of mist in the morning, we're going to have fairly good travel weather, except over there on the West Coast. And that low out there on the West Coast is the one we're going to have to keep an eye on for what may or may not happen this weekend. By Thursday, a chance for a little bit of rain around here into Friday. Uh, somewhat of a break in the action then on Saturday. And then that next system tries to work its way on in here for Sunday and maybe on into Monday. And the reason for that is it's one of those cutoff lows that those things just kind of have a mind of their own. That's what's producing some of the rain off the West Coast right now. And then watch what this thing does over the course of the next few days. It's going to sort of work its way in our direction, meander around here. That's why we get a little bit of a break in the action on Saturday. Some more energy comes in on Sunday and then maybe a shower or two on Monday, although right now kind of my hunch is leaning toward most of that would be uh, pushed on out of here and then perhaps another front by the middle of next week. Anyway, Kind of jumping ahead of myself here. 67 today, 70 tomorrow, as well as Thursday, Friday, much warmer low temperatures. We'll have a little bit of mist around the area, some drizzle tomorrow morning, a couple of showers Thursday, better chance Friday. Lull in the action Saturday, and then I think picking back up again Sunday, perhaps a leftover on Monday. Very warm over the weekend, and we're looking at 70 on Christmas. It's nice weather for the kiddos. Yes, it's going to be nice for that. Won't need a heavy jacket on Christmas, no, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 553. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3304, three, Fireball 5. Daily 42347, four, Fireball 8. Cash 51513, 2535. Texas 2-step, 1114, 17. Bonus ball 25. And Powerball 5819, 3439, Powerball 26. Power play 3. Good Tuesday morning. It is great to be with you. Coming up here on GMA, we are all tracking that storm that really did a number for air travel and some of the roads as so many are beginning their holiday travel. And then Dan Abrams is here to break down the fallout from the Jonathan Majors verdict, the actor who has now been dropped from the Marvel Universe. Also, don't miss Ted Lasso star Hannah Waddingham and a stellar performance by the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, all live in Times Square. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, this time of year can be pricey, so we have some ideas when it comes to planning a holiday dinner without breaking the bank. We're speaking with the Vice President of Enterprise Fraud Management at Randolph Brooks Credit Union on how to wrap up Christmas shopping without getting wrapped into a scam. 
And nearly 9 million people missed their first student loan payment this fall, but we have some good news for borrowers. As we go to break, let's take a live look at Transguide 35 at Space Center. There's 35 at Flores. Things looking pretty good on your early Tuesday morning. You're watching GMSA. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's six o'clock on your Tuesday, December 19th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful Monday and the weather's been beautiful in the afternoon, but uh, some people with allergies, it's <laughs> not that fun though. Oh, the mountain scenery has been a mess around here lately. And let's talk about a mild forecast in the run up to Christmas. Yeah, it started off feeling a lot like Christmas yesterday and over the weekend we had those big warm ups and this morning still on the cool side, but not quite down to where we should be. Then yeah, it's all it and pff, big 180 basically as we go on into the rest of the week. Beautiful view out there all looking off to the east. You can see that all the sparkling lights and we've got very dry air down here at the surface. A little bit of moisture upstairs though, but uh, that's would normally allow temperatures to really drop down because they don't have any wind to deal with as well. We're at uh, 35 in comfort. We're at 48 now out there at the airport, but we do have a little bit of some moisture aloft in the atmosphere. This is the water vapor imagery. Remember a couple of days ago, we had those just intensely blue skies because it was really dry upstairs in the atmosphere. And this is translating into a few uh, kind of mid high level clouds out there, which is acting like a bit of a blanket. So that's what's going to prevent us from getting as cold as what we could get. Uh, talk about uh, allergens. Mountain cedar really shot up yesterday. 3150 on the high side. Mold is low. The updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning and throughout the rest of today and may fluctuate another degree or two this morning, dropping down and then keep some of those clouds around throughout the day. 62 at noon, make it up to 67 later on today, which is on the warm side of things, three, four degrees on average above the uh, respective normal high temperature this time of year. Humidity is going to make a turn overnight. So what does that mean as far as low temperatures and rain chances? Plus, of course, we take a look ahead to uh, Christmas weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, still got problems out there? Yeah, Mike, uh, starting to see things build up a little bit here in your Tuesday morning. Good morning to everyone out there. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we're taking a look right now at Transguide Loop 1604 at State Highway 150 in the SeaWorld area. So uh, TxDOT's reporting a crash out here. I, this is the closest camera we have to this area. Haven't really seen anything that's indicating any sort of uh, major issues out there right now. But when I look at our maps, we are seeing some sort of traffic buildup. Again, that camera's located further up in that intersection there at 151 and 1604. This crash being reported a little bit further down the road there. Again, the northbound lanes of 151 headed towards 1604, so a little bit past Westover Hills and obviously Wiseman Bull. Boulevard. So something we'll continue to monitor as we make our way through your Tuesday morning. Still following this uh, stalled vehicle being reported on the shoulder there in the northbound lanes at Solms Road. So if you are headed out from Cibolo, Shirts area, Selma area up to New Braunfels, just keep this in mind. But it uh, doesn't appear to be causing any major traffic delays at the moment. The rest of the city, things looking pretty good for the most part. Uh, do have a little bit of delays out here in the far east side if you are headed out in the Converse area, but uh, TxDOT not reporting anything right now at the moment out there, but something we'll continue to monitor as we make our way through. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say an early morning walk to breakfast ended with a girl shot. So this is a scene from a Denny's at the intersection of Northwest Loop 410 and Caliber Road. Police say two girls were walking to the restaurant just after 3 a.m. when a group of girls with masks drove into the parking lot and demanded their belongings. Police say once she refused, the girl shot her. That girl was taken to the hospital. Now, the San Antonio Police Department is not reporting any arrests so far. However, officers say they have an idea of who the suspect is because of an Instagram post. We have an update to a story we told you about yesterday morning here on GMSA. A 39-year-old convicted child predator back behind bars after escaping a prison over in Brazoria County, south of Houston. Authorities actually found Robert Yancey Jr. in Matagorda County. A man and woman were also arrested for allegedly helping him escape. Yancey's own mother is charged with helping him, and the other man is facing intent to escape charges. Governor Greg Abbott is signing a new state law making it a crime to illegally enter the state. Senate Bill 3 will send $1.5 billion to continue building barriers along our border with Mexico. Senate Bill 4 gives local law enforcement along the southern border the power to arrest anybody they catch entering the U.S. illegally. Governor Greg Abbott signed both bills into law yesterday in Brownsville. 
the authors of the United States Constitution foresaw a situation when the federal government would be inattentive to states that faced challenges at their borders. And in response, they inserted Article 1, Section 10 to the United States Constitution to empower states to take action to defend themselves. Supporters are praising Abbott's move, saying it provides Texas with another way to protect its southern border. However, others have issues with this new law. 21 Democratic lawmakers wrote a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland expressing, quote, grave concern about Texas Senate Bill 4. Both laws are expected to take effect in March. Back here in San Antonio, the third installment of our newest series, Know My Neighborhood, is a wrap. Our crew put the spotlight on one of the most historic neighborhoods. Our Know My Neighborhood team shares what they learned at Dignity Hill. I'm here with Steve and Daniela Ibarra for our recap of today's Know My Neighborhood, Dignity Hill. And Daniela, you did an awesome story really highlighting the police presence that exists in this neighborhood and how there is such a connection between Officer Carlos Gutierrez and the people who live here that really showed through in that ride along you did with him. Yeah, you could tell he really cares. I mean, he talked to everyone from every walk of life. I know he spent a lot of time with the homeless community, really getting to know them. I remember one thing that really stood out to me is we, we did this a week after Thanksgiving and he asked them how their Thanksgiving was and talked about that for yeah. quite a while with them. It's also just the history that is here. Yeah. And the fact that, yes, they have great views of downtown, but they're also, like I, like I said in the story, they have a front row seat to some of the problems that we see in our city that, that we're dealing with all over the city. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see how this neighborhood moves forward because we have seen how it's changed so rapidly in the past couple of years. There's also a, a bit of a synchronicity going on here with Know My Neighborhood. We talked to somebody who just moved from the Alamo Ranch yeah. neighborhood <laughs> yeah. here to Dignity Hills, and he was surprised that he is paying double the taxes in dignity yeah. that he was paying, I believe it was in Westover Hills, West which is Hills. which is very mm -hmm. close to Alamo Ranch. So popularity has a price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but people love living here and they really care about the character of this neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Daniela, and, thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, There's so many job. things we want people to go check out. Every individual story that we did in this episode is on our website. You can do your own deep dive and get to know this neighborhood like we have. Yeah, we've done Westwood Square. We've done Alamo Ranch. We've done Dignity Hills. And coming up next in January, we go to Harlandale McCullough. That's our next stop in our monthly Know My Neighborhood tour. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of your morning headlines. Pope Francis says Roman Catholic priests can bless same-sex couples. The new Vatican policy aimed at making the Catholic Church more inclusive, but the church doesn't allow gay marriage. According to the new rule, the blessings can be carried out <clears throat> as long as they aren't a part of regular church rituals. They also can't take place at the same time as a civil union ceremony. About 40% of student loan borrowers missed their first payment after the pandemic-related pause ended this fall. That comes out to about 9 million borrowers. People who miss payments any time through September of next year will not be reported to the National Credit Bureaus. However, interest will continue to accrue. The Department of Education encourages those to go to studentaid.gov to plan. We also have the steps on how to repay on our website at kset.com. For many students, this is the first week of winter break, so let's take a look at the winter break schedules. Not everybody was off yesterday. These are off from December 18th, yesterday through January 3rd. That'd be Northside, SAISD, Northeast, Comal, Bernie, and Alamo Heights ISD. From December 18th to January 9th, Randolph Field ISD is also off. And then December 18th to January 4th, we have Edgewood and IDEA Public Schools are on break. December 18th to January 8th, Justin ISD is off. Southside School District is off from December 21st to January 5th and December 22nd to January 8th. East Central ISD is off. December 22nd to January 9th, South San Medina Valley, Shirt Cibolo Universal City, Fort Sam and Somerset are on break. And listen to this, uh, South, Southwest ISD, yeah. they're not out till next week, but they're out December 25th all the way through January 9th. Again, that's for Southwest ISD.
And happening today, residents in South San Antonio may hear the sounds of bombs exploding this week, but police say not to worry. The bomb squad will be practicing at the San Antonio Police Department Training Academy. This is off of Southeast Loop 410 near 281. Training is happening from 9 this morning to 1 p.m. today and noon to 2 p.m. tomorrow. 6.09 on your Tuesday morning, 48 degrees. If you're planning a holiday dinner, we have some ideas on how to give your wallet some time off. Listen up, Apple users. The company taking some of its newest Apple Watches off the market. We'll tell you why after the break. And looking out there with a live cam, a cold morning to start your day. So if you are still going to school, you'll need a jacket in the morning, but not so much in the afternoon. We'll be right back.